Welcome back to another video and today we are going to take a look on how to install OPN Sense on Proxmox, a step-by-step -step guide which is simple so that you can follow up. We will be installing on the Zimmer board which has a Sabrent SSD. If you don't know the Zimmer board I will leave a link right over here and if you still haven't installed Proxmox there will be links right over here as well on a guide on how to. On the last video we took a look on how to install PFSense so I will try to leave a link right over there as well. We installed Home Assistant the fastest way that we have discovered so far so all those links right over there. If you are watching this video on your Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated your license don't forget to check out KeysFan where you'll find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below in the video description you will get an extra discount. Having that in mind one last thing we are using the Zima board which has two gigabit Ethernet ports and you can use this on any other so if you're trying to use your older computer you can follow along and try it for yourself and then if you decide that it's not strong enough for all this and you want to purchase a Zimo board which is a great mini server links down below as well but if you want to use your older computer I would suggest to get one of these especially if you are trying to replace your router or if you want to manage all your network on a device such as this and if you only have one gigabit port then probably this is a good idea. If you want to follow along and just try it out and you don't want to replace the router, you just want to play around, then you can also do that. And in that particular case, you don't need the two ports. So let's go to open OPN Sense. So the first step is to go to OPN Sense and there it is, just browse around on Google and you will find it and then download OPN Sense. In architecture we're going to leave it AMD64, right over here we are going to select DVD which is the ISO and then the location, just select the one near to you and press download. In my case I already have the ISO here on my MacBook Pro. So what we are going to do right now is to go into our Proxmox server, local PV, and probably you are going to go right over here, but you want to select ISO or ISO images. And where we have PF Sense, we want to upload as well the OPN Sense. So let's go to upload, select the file, and as you can see, I've got mine right over here. Just open it up and upload. Have in mind that when we download the file, it will be zipped, so we will need to extract to have the ISO to be able to make the upload. And the upload is done so we have the image we can close this on our proxmox server and that is it we can start with the setup so first of all we will need to create a virtual machine on general we will select the name that we want in this particular case opn sense but you can select anything else we press next the iso we are going to select the one that we want right now the opn sense next and then on system we will leave it as it is on disks we have 32 gigs let's put on 40 gigs which is more than enough but we have two terabytes of saber and ssd so okay let's move on on cpu cores let's put in two which is plenty and on memory we can leave it as it is two gigabytes and press next network we will leave this one as it is we will need to add one other but we will do it later on and just to confirm let's press finish and it will create the machine as you can see right over here we just need to wait a few seconds so that it deploys everything that it has to deploy and there we go it's ready so now if i select right over here uh, we will have to go to the hardware and where it says hardware we will find one network device if you are using just for fun and to try it out and you only have one gigabit port then that is okay but if you are using a device with two gigabit ports or two ethernet ports to be more precise or if you added one then you will need to add it right over here so let's add on and network device and in this particular case i'm going to select the vmpr1 and add if you don't see your second device here you will need to go to the 
machine, your server, and then on network you will need to add it because this is a physical, this is a physical port which has right over here, but these are two virtual uh, ports. So if you only have the physical ones, you'll need to create a Linux bridge and then right where it says bridge pro ports, you will have to write the port that you see right over here. In this case, if I wanted to create one here, I would say, I would write E, uh, sorry, E N P. 2s0. So I would create a bridge based on this one right over here, which I don't because I already have that bridge create right over here and the other one created here. So just have this in mind if you don't see yours on the OPN sense. Having that said, we will also go to options and where we have start at boot, let's select start at boot. Okay, because if we reboot the machine, we want to have the OPN sense which manages our network to boot up so that we have internet for all the devices. And basically this is it. We are now ready to go to our console and on our console let's press start now and for you it's a matter of a few seconds. But it took about four minutes or so for me and we are on the screen. Probably not four minutes, but at least two or three minutes it took. Now, it looks like we have the installation finished, but not yet. We can see that we have a LAN port, which has the 192.168.1.1, and we have no one connection yet, because I did not connect it to my router yet. So, it seems that we already have this. So, if we go to 192.168.1.1 what happens is that okay we are connected so let's go to advanced and accept the risks and we have OPN Sense, which the username is root and the password is OPN Sense, so we can log in now one thing that we can check out is if we go to the dashboards and skip the um, wizards you will see that you are currently running in live CD mode. A reboot will reset the configuration and so on and so forth. So this means that we are running off the ISO, the DVD emulation. And this is not exactly what we want because we will do changes and we want those changes to be permanent. So let's close this and let's get back to our machine. This was just to show you that it's a bit different from the PFSense installation and all the other installations that we have seen. So on the login right over here, what we are going to do is we are going to select install or going to write installer and we're going to press uh, enter. And on the password is OPN sense. Okay, press enter. And this will bring us to the proper installation. So let's go to the continue with default install UFS. Okay, and where we want to install on the 40 gigabytes that we just created when selecting our virtual machine. So press OK. Continue with the recommended swap partition. Yes. Last chance. Are you sure you want to destroy? Yes, because we don't have anything right over there. And bam. Now we are going to wait, uh, I would say about four, five minutes or so. For you, it will be just a few seconds. And here we go, almost finished. As it says, setup of your OPNSS system is nearly complete. So, do we want to change the password? Not for now. So, let's complete install, exit, and reboot. Now, we want to press Ctrl C to abort. Why? Because if I leave it on reboot, it will reboot from the ISO image and not from the hard drive. And we don't want to do that because we want to work as a permanent solution. So what we are going to do right now is to perform a shutdown of the machine. Yes. And once we see that the machine is grayed out, we are ready to make the changes. So let's go to hardware and from our ISO, let's press edit and select do not use any media. So in this particular case, we no longer will be running from the ISO. And we'd, we have the installation on our hard drive. But let's select on the options, our boot order. So let's press here. And our boot order is local hard drive, 40 gigs, and then all 
the other. So we are going to leave this as it is. But in your case, if you uh, added the drive after the creation of the VM or if anything is not working, you will be able to come right over here and change the order or the sequence of boot and there we go so let's close this out and we are now ready to start the machine and we know that is going to boot from the R drive which we will be able to make all the changes and they will be permanent so a few more seconds And without selecting anything, we are back on this screen. So we have the login, which we are not going to do right over here. We can see that we have the IP address from our LAN and we don't have a WAN connection yet because I will need to deploy it near my router so that we have the WAN connection. So let's go to the browser and let's go for 192.168.1.1.1. And let's press enter and the password is root sorry the username root and the password is opn send let's do the login now it's doing the login without the wizard because I've done quite a few installations and probably it's on my uh, cache of the browser so let's go to system and let's go to wizard so this is the first screen that we will see uh, as soon as we uh, do the login. So let's press next so that you can see what you will face. And basically it's really easy. We can leave the host name at your choice. In my case, I will leave it as it is. The domain as well, select the language that you want. Um, I would select probably Portuguese Portugal, which is my main language, but let's leave it in English and let's leave this or select depending on your time zone. Mine is okay, so let's press next. DHCP, yes, but let's change here on the networks. Let's disable the block private networks from entering via one. This is not necessary and probably in most cases will generate conflicts on the network. So let's remove that. The IP address from the LAN we can change right over here, but I don't see the need for this purpose. If you want to use any other, feel free to do it. I will leave the subnet mask as 24. Root password we can change right over here, but I will leave it as it is. And let's press on reload. And there we go. The wizard is basically finished and congratulations, OPN Sense is now configured. So let's continue to the dashboard and there we go. We have all our services with the exception of DHCP6, which is normal, I don't have a WAN connection. Um, and what we can see right over here, one of the differences from PEF Sense is that OPN Sense runs FreeBSD 13.1, while the PEF Sense is running FreeBSD 12.3, if I'm not mistaken, which is older. And for what I've seen and for what I've tried, what it seems is that if you are using a newer machine, you will have better chances of having old drivers with OPN Sense which PFSense sometimes do not have the drivers for that particular machine if it's really new. If it's an older machine, I believe that it will be okay in both cases. But if you want to know more differences about the two, there's a lot of info in the internet, so just feel free to do it. In my particular case, this is it. We have installed OPN Sense on a Proxmox, in this particular case, a mini home lab server such as the Zima board. So right now I only need to deploy it and put it um, between my router and my network devices. And that is it. And in terms of the advantages and disadvantages, very similar to PFSense. If we are running our network management inside a virtual machine, it's great because we have a lot of services and we are taking full advantage of the hardware. But on the other side, that advantage turns out to be a disadvantage as well. Because if I lose my PFSense or OPN sense in this particular case, VM, then all my network will lose the internet, including the server. And if I reboot my server because I want to test out anything, I will lose access to the virtual machine which gives internet to the network settings to all the devices because it is inside a virtual machine. So this is something that you will need to 
consider. In my opinion, if you are using a server which is a server with a few services that you want to take advantage, like Plex and so on and so forth, that you are not going to use too intensively and that you are not going to constantly be rebooting the server, then I would say that it's okay. Okay, on a home lab. On the other hand, if it's a server that you are trying a lot of stuff and you are constantly rebooting, then probably it's not a good idea to virtualize the network OPN sense or PF sense. But this is something that you will have to decide. Until then, you feel free to play around with it and see which one you prefer. The installation, hope that was helpful in your case. And if it was, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. I'm going to close this video, which is a long one. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.